When we start our transition journey as ambitious vets, it isn't always smooth sailing, is it? A lot of us undervalue ourselves or worse, subscribe to the wrong information that only lead us down a road to nowhere fulfilling or rewarding. How do we break out of conventional wisdom and defining what we want and how to execute on it without getting too lost in the process? Well, Ambitious Vet, stay tuned to gain the golden grenades needed to break through new levels of satisfaction, impact, and success. Nobody can give you 100% of the answers all the time, right? You know that to be true. You know that there is no silver bullet, right? Which means you are going to have to interrogate the reality in which you exist, which means that you are asking questions about everything. Is this actually working? Is this really what I want to do? And you understand that there are no sacred cows. What's going on, ambitious post 9-11 service members and families? I've recently partnered up with Combine Arms on a project with the mission to accelerating the resources and tools to veterans here on LinkedIn, leveraging their innovative technology, 90 plus member organizations and over 500 unique resources. They've created a one-stop shop solution, starting with their assessment and connecting you within 90 hours to the top vetted resources they have found that deliver results. Right now, it's more crucial than ever to gain your feedback on what they have been able to do, where they may be falling short, and what you need to grow into the professional you desire most to be here on LinkedIn and beyond. Like our previous guest, the 20-year retired Marine veteran Carlton uh, Forsling said on M- episode 123, don't be an Uncle Rico in life post-military. Get out of Uncle Rico's van and share what you need right now to accelerate your career, life, or business. How can you do this? Take 10 minutes of your life and click the link in the post or in the comments to take a brief feedback survey. Once you do that, you'll be entered into a raffle to win your pair of Combine Arms combat flip-flops. And the coolest thing is two winners will be announced once our goal of 50 veterans have been achieved. Welcome to the Ambitious Vet Podcast. My name is Chris Hoffman. I'm a Marine Corps combat veteran turned social entrepreneur. Here I dive into the trenches with today's most ambitious, goal-oriented, and growth-minded military veterans on the planet to empower you with the golden grenades needed to break through new levels of satisfaction, fulfillment, and success after career stability has already been figured out. Now, I do have to give you a quick disclaimer, Ambitious, that we do say you knows, we do say ums inside of this. And as I'm sure you've already found out by being in the uniform and outside of it, life isn't perfect. This show ain't perfect either. But if you do, do this one thing. Listen for the golden grenades. I promise you. You're going to get one critical insight that's going to move your life forward. Let's dive in. It's time to get into the trenches, dig dig into your purpose, and and fire up your life fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vet? We are right back inside the trenches today with Carson Honeycutt. He's founder of the Zen Veteran. His philosophy is no veteran should feel like civilian life is a place of suffering. Carson's job is to help professional, ambitious, post and island veter- veterans avoid entrapment and transition purgatory by challenging the BS of conventional transition wisdom. He challenges the big BS of conventional transition wisdom by breaking down the mindsets, the strategies, and tactics of world-class experts or titans, he calls them, to help veterans compress the transition learning curve. Carson, welcome to the Ambitious Vet Show, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's weird to be on the other end of this. Brother, I know know that feeling. That's so good. I mean, brother, I mean, you've you've been able to interview some titans. Um, You've been able to be in the trenches yourself, have a very diverse transition story. So go ahead and just fill the gaps inside the introduction. Let us know about your background and also your transition story leading up to today. Yeah. So, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you where I'm at right now and then we'll work our way back from there. How about that? So where I'm at right now, uh, I just finished up law school, just finished up my JD working in a firm doing workers' compensation and helping, uh, plaintiffs with that type of work. Now, how did I get here? Well, that was a very long and 
painful process that I think a lot of people refer to now as the, tr the transition, right? It is the transition in the veteran space. <laughs> and I was just like everybody else. You know, I did five years. I wasn't anybody special. I was a sergeant coming out of the Marines. I mean, I thought I was special, but you know, I, I, I didn't see myself as any, like anybody special. I didn't have a book deal waiting for me. None of those things. Right. And I really just wanted to go enjoy life for the first time. I got out in 2010. My goal was to go to college and just have a good time for a little while. Cause I felt like I, you know, I had earned that. Right. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I went to school. I did my undergrad, worked really hard for three and a half years, graduated summa cum laude. Right. And that was what I had been told. Like, that's the ticket, right? You, you get out, you go to school, you get the degree. Now you can get the jobs. Now you move up. People will be ready to hire you because you have all this military background and then you stack on a degree on top of it. Shoe in. Right. That's that's mm. what I had been told. Right. And, and I think a lot of people are told that. And I got into the, the working world. I was, I'd gone to school in Salt Lake City and I moved to Chicago to work with this big international firm, right? Like they had had, they'd been voted like the top 10 office space in Chicago, it had all the swag, right? Uh, and I was working a sales job there, started out doing very well, and then just absolutely full stop on my life. Mm. past that point. So we're, we're talking about 2014 at this point. Mm. I had started to see some of the, some of the stuff coming in uh, when I was in school, but it really didn't hit me full head because dude, I got fired from this job that I've been told I've been doing a great job at. Mm. Right. And I only been there for nine months. I just moved to a new city and right? Chicago's not cheap. It's certainly a lot it's more not. expensive than Salt Lake city. And from there, dude, all the dominoes just started falling. Right. I lost well, losing that job. I was not prepared financially for that. I was not prepared socially for that. I was not prepared mentally for that. I was not prepared professionally for that because I would thought, okay, I'm going to be here for two or three years. I'll build up my cash reserves and, you know, I'll move on to the next thing. Well, that, that option was suddenly taken off the table and I realized how isolated I was mm. within that. So that was my first kind of wake up call. Well, interestingly enough, I landed in a very interesting position with a friend of mine running a food truck in Chicago. And that was actually kind of the, the moment where I got the entrepreneurial bug, right? Because it was just me, him and three other people. We started out as a food truck, moved to a brick and mortar. And by the time I left, we, we were at three restaurants in Chicago and we were winning awards in our category. And I was like, wow, this is actually really fun. Why is this so much better than that sales job that I just hated so much, even though I was told I was doing good at it? That started a lifelong journey of questioning, right, from there, because I realized for the first time the curtain had been pulled back, this dream that I had been running towards was really a lot more like a nightmare, right? And I even remember one day where I was, right before I was going to go to work that day, it was just a Tuesday, right? No, no, no particular, nothing particularly interesting about it other than I just got out of the shower, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, I can't go do that shit today. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to do that job at all because it was a very cutthroat sales environment. And it was the first time in my life where I'd ever been on a team where you were supposed to be competitive with your teammates in the sense that like, you know, if the deal's on the table and you think you can close it, take it from them and close it, you know, like that type of stuff. Different and that just didn't sit well. Yeah. And it didn't sit well with me. And I was encouraged to do it one time and I did. And it, that self-loathing, that came from, from taking credit from somebody else's work and being encouraged to do so from my boss. I think that really started that domino effect. Mm. And it took time from there because all of these, these plans I had laid out were suddenly so unattractive and I'm living in the city and I realized I don't even want to be in Chicago. Right. I don't want to be here. I don't like living in the city. I was riding the Brown line every morning to downtown Chicago. It's like three miles from where I'm at to where I'm trying to go three miles. Mm. And it took an hour every yeah. day to yeah. get there, right? And then an hour back, and I'm sandwiched in with people just crowding in around me like you know, like a sardine in a can, and people are breathing on my neck. I'm like, this is not me. This is so not me. I can't do this. And it wasn't until I actually got very sincere with myself. I'm like, what do you want? And I had a buddy of mine who uh, from the Marines who grew up in Alaska. He was back up in Alaska at the time. He's like, dude, just come up here. And it's great up here. And I trusted this guy a lot because he's my best friend. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. If my best friend says Alaska's what's up, I'm going to go check it out. 
And that was really what I wanted because we see, especially a lot, a lot of ambitious veterans, they think that everything is about the career, right? And yes, that's important. Yes, you need to be focused on what you're going to do professionally, right? Because you've got to have an income stream for sure to do anything, right? Otherwise, you're going to end up trapped financially again. But it was the first time that I realized, you know what? My career decisions can really be a reflection of what else I'm trying to do. And what, what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to go live in Alaska and have a good time and do some mountain mm -hmm. biking and making enough money, not making all the money. I don't, you know, there's this, this, this six figure trap that somehow you think that if you're making six figures, you've suddenly made it, you know, and like, that's the goal. But I'll tell yeah. you what, my experience has been that <laughs> if you start making six figures, expectations start getting really, really high. And suddenly you're expected to be like on call for 24 hours or people feel comfortable calling you at 2 a.m. And I don't want that, right? I want a little <laughs> bit of separation in my life. So it was the first time that I really honed in on what I wanted. And I got to tell you, weeks later, I arrive in Alaska and weeks later, my life is just back up right? I met my wife two weeks after I arrived here. We got married oh, 10 wow. weeks later, <clears throat> moved into a house. You know, I bought a reasonable car. I'm working again within two weeks of arriving here. And it was because I was in so much of a better headspace. And when I was talking to people, I was able to articulate what I was actually trying to do, right? Because mm -hmm. I'd gone through that hard work of actually saying, this is what I want. This is what I want my life to look like. This is who I want to be. Which isn't yeah. always easy to do, right? Because, yeah. you know, it took me a few years getting out too to like really gain the mental clarity to be like, this is what I want, but then also have the courage to communicate what I want yeah. in the world, right? Because exactly. I think us, and, you know, if you're ambitious or not, or aspiring to be more ambitious in your life, sometimes, you know, we can, we can kind of have that inferiority complex where we're just like, well, I've got to prove myself to the marketplace. They'll tell me based on how much they pay, pay me or whatever. Exactly. Right. But to your point, um, you know, it is kind of like a quality of life thing as well. I know that's starting to become like one of those buzzwords, but yeah, um, yeah man. So continue with that, but that's a good, that's a really good point. And it's good to hear that you went to Alaska and things started rocking and rolling. Yeah. You know, and I started working and I found myself in an industry that I wouldn't have otherwise find, found myself in. Right. Yep. And it was, yep. it was the risk industry doing it. In, in, and originally it was placing insurance, but over time I was able to morph my role. So I was actually doing risk management consulting with our clients and actually helping them identify business risk. And I was like, this mm. is my, this is it. This is what yeah. I'm good at because for whatever reason, I have an ability, a superpower to look at a business and be like, this is where you're about to get freight trained <laughs> and you don't uh. even see it coming. <laughs> And it was through that job that I realized, you know what, I keep having to refer people to lawyers so often, I should just become one because that's where the market is for my the position that I'm in right now, this type of consulting that I'm doing, really, I'm, cons I'm just doing all the hard work for a lawyer to make, you know, $1,000 an hour, why don't I just go do that, right? Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have identified it if I never would have gotten on that path. And you talked about how long it takes to be able to define what you want. And that it took a long time for me because I wasn't admitting what I didn't want, right? It's very hard when you're new to a situation in, in this situation, let's say civilian life, right? It's very hard to know what you want. But a lot of times you can define what you want or you can start kind of triangling to do a little bit of triangulation on what you want by deciding what you absolutely refuse to do, right? What you refuse to become. And that starts helping it. And, and yeah, you're framing it from the negative. And I don't necessarily encourage people to do that all the time. But when you're just starting out, you know, what do you have? I think it's right. more of a realistic view. Yeah. And I think veterans think tend to think more realistic, right? Yeah. More philosophical on decision making. I mean, in my experience, but yeah. I, I like that. I like the, the whole going to the opposite side of things, right? Yeah. Going to the other side of the sword. Different perspective there, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you start to see like, man, these are, I've been doing all these things, right? Tim Ferriss, in the four hour work, he calls it defining the nightmare, right? Mm -hmm. And picking up that book was instrumental to me in my mind shift, because I was like, this is the first person who's ever said it. This is yeah. exactly what I'm going through. It talks about defining the nightmare. And I realized that I was living my nightmare. I was like, why am I in Chicago? Why am I here? I yeah. hate it here. I can't, I can't do anything with my dog. I had a dog. He's a red healer. He needs a lot of space, right? That's a cattle dog. Chicago's <laughs> not the place, man. And he kept it's getting busy. fleas. It's busy city. Yeah. And he kept getting fleas. It was the worst. <laughs> I was, I was miserable. <laughs> and so I had to say, I, these are the things that I don't want. 
and these are the types of and even the peop, types of the people that I was meeting in the dating realm, right? And the types mm. of friends I was making. I was like, you know, I like these people, but they're not my people, right? right. Like they don't want to go rip on some trails and possibly get hurt mountain biking. That's just not what they're into. They want to uh. go check out the they want to check out the newest opening of the newest restaurant and the yeah. newest part of the city that's popping. That's the navy not what I'm interested in. Whatever, yeah, that's, yeah. That's not what I'm interested in. And right. it's not that that's wrong. Some people thrive in that environment. I am not one of them. Yeah. That's awesome, brother, that you really identified really what you wanted, what you didn't want. I think that's there's a lot of golden grenade just right in there. Some seed of wisdom right there for an ambitious vet to kind of unpackage for themselves as far as identifying as quickly as possible what they yep. don't want and avoid that. Not resist it, but find a new pathway towards exactly. you know where they want, want to go, right? That's awesome, brother. So thanks for doing that. And I know you have like a very diverse transition career background oh, yeah. just like i had i had five different careers in five different um industries and i i was looking through your linkedin profile brother i mean you've been in pets culinary <laughs> sales risk mitigator business development now you're becoming an attorney but you've also along the way became very educated right both both formally and informally and i think that's what i respect about you the most is that you know you've been on the formal education You've been on it, brother. You've been shit hot with that. But like, you've also been able to educate yourself informally as well, like personal, professional growth, and you really are becoming a titan. So let's, let's kind of shift gears a little bit and talk about the difference between divergent thinking versus conventional wisdom. How have you leveraged this in your everyday life and to becoming the titan that you are today or aspire to be? So divergent thinking versus conventional wisdom, right? Conventional wisdom is really, a, bo both of them are more of a thought mode, right? Mm -hmm. Conventional wisdom is like this bizarre form of group think where people start saying things and everybody just accepts it as true, right? It's not that it's wrong. It's not that it's a lie. It's not that it's bad. It's not that it's evil. It's that it's just accepted, right? That versus divergent thinking. Divergent thinking, you question everything because you understand that your situation is unique. You understand that nobody can give you 100% of the answers all the time, right? You know that to be true. You know that there is no silver bullet, right? Which means you are going to have to interrogate the reality in which you exist, which means that you are asking questions about everything. Is this actually working? is this really what I want to do? And you understand that there are no sacred cows, right? You will slaughter anything and everything, assuming that you're not being a bad person, right? To uh -huh. get things out of your way so that you can focus on what's important. Because a lot of what I see in conventional wisdom is it's random tactics, right? It's random spatterings, or it's so hyper-specific that it doesn't function within, within a part of a strategic whole, right? That's conventional transition wisdom as I see it. An obvious example from my perspective is people talking about tweaking your resume, right? Mm -hmm. Be like, make sure you're tweaking your resume and tailoring it to each job. I'm like, what does that mean? What is that? Yes, I understand like at a, at a very high general level, what tweaking your resume means and tailoring it to a specific job means. It means be specific to the job you want, but how the hell do you know what words to use, right? You, you don't necessarily know what they're looking for. Is this what somebody in HR was writing and is it or are these the words of the direct hiring manager is what is this what they actually care about right so a divergent thinker looks at that and says that really doesn't tell me much and what i need is more information and so what i need if i want more information is i want more good information mm -hmm. if i want good information why well, should go find an expert and you start digging right and you start evaluating experts and you you look at the the landscape and say here's one person who's really far this direction. Here's one person who's really far this direction. Here's one person in the middle who's kind of amalgamated all of it and explained it all. Well, I'll go to that person in the middle, see what they have to say, and then make my decision from there, right? Conventional wisdom says, okay, I'm going to start grinding out on making my resume tailor specific to each job. Yeah. What that results in is what I've seen a lot of veterans do, right? You see people telling them to grind it out or, you know, what we need is more discipline. And I'm like, this is a very disciplined group of people already right there's not <laughs> veterans are not suffering from a lack of discipline generally speaking there are some sure but you know those are the turds anyway what they're suffering from is being diligent about stuff that isn't effective right and 
how I've seen this play out is I had a, a mentee of mine, we'll call this, right? Mm -hmm. Sent out 300 resumes, 300, 300, zero, zero, two calls back. That's it. No job options. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's that. That's the trap of conventional transition wisdom. He listened. Right. And it's not that it's wrong. Yeah. You want to be very specific. You want to be very tailored. You want to be hyper focused. Definitely. But that means that you need to do research and how you do that research is fundamentally different if you're a divergent thinker because you're questioning everything. Right. So let's, versus... l- let's get that. Let's, let's unpackage that a little bit more. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm definitely a diversified thinker. That's why I attend masterminds and stuff like that to kind of think more out of the box, but like it took me time to start thinking more creatively, more critically, um, and to create solutions through other people. Right. And I don't think, you know, I'm not speaking for all the ambitious vets listening to this brother, but I'm sure that there's an ambitious vet in here. That's like, well, these civilians don't get me right. Yeah. You know, so like speak to that better. And that's like level one. How do we start diversifying our thinking? So you start diversifying thinking you by diversifying your thinking by knowing your own thinking, right? That is the importance of going through that, that process of literally writing down what it is that you want and don't want, right? Because that's really what's going to be your, your left and right lateral limits. If you can't do that, nothing happens, right? So once you've diversified, you're thinking, saying, what's important to me, go jump into that area. I'll go back to mountain biking. Mm -hmm. Mountain biking has opened more doors for me than arguably any other activity in my life. Besides maybe weightlifting, just because of the people that I've met. So what I hear in that, what I hear in that brother is like you just getting into different environments too. Like one thing that's worked for you is just, hey, Chicago ain't working. I don't know why but I'm going to go try Alaska. Hey, and what's the worst case scenario? I don't like it there and go somewhere else. Yeah. Right. If you place yourself in new environments that spark new ideas, new, new neural pathways, you know, new thinking yep. processes and stuff like that, which is, which is impressive. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And so that's, you just keep doing that. Just do stuff that you enjoy. Like everybody wants to be like, well, what makes me happy? Be like, yeah, I don't know. Do, do what excites you. And for me, what's exciting is stuff that's a little dangerous, right? Like I've gotten uh, hurt mountain biking. Yep. It's definitely a dangerous activity, but that's the thrill, right? Mm. And what I found through that is I found all these civilians who think and act just like me. I'm like, oh, right. they do get me. I was right. just in the wrong place. Right. right. I was at the wrong bar at the wrong time with the wrong people. That's it. Yeah. And so that is how I've created more diversity in my thinking and getting that the creative juice. But I also do other things, right? So mm-hmm. I use the five Bs to kind of filter where I need to spend more time, right? And the five Bs are the brain, the body, the bankroll, bi- buddies and business, okay? And what I'm looking at, when I'm, when I'm determining what my priorities are, or what I wanna get into or what I wanna try next, I'm thinking within that framework. Cause I think of that framework as kind of like the, the total package of my life, if you will. And I need to focus tightly on at least one thing in each of those areas. So something I do for my brain that also helps with diversity of thinking and divergent thinking is music. I love playing guitar. It's, it's become a huge passion of mine. Yeah. And I've met a lot of people from there, right? And each one of those people has their new things that they introduced me to. And, you know, maybe today we're talking about music, but maybe this person I'm with is also a financial guru and they're in their personal finances way better. And they introduced me to a book. Now I've got a new bankroll. Yeah, that's a All really right. good way of thinking about that, brother. That's really spot on and huge. Yeah. Like, ambitious that what I'm hearing in this is I need to create more hobbies in my life. <laughs> yeah, just do it, you know, because the, the, all kinds of opportunities just fall out that I could never have manufactured, right? Yeah. They wouldn't have been on the table otherwise. And again, you win more friends, you influence more people, your status starts building. And if you think for one second, that you're going to find the dream job of yours without having friends to introduce you and get you into kind of some of those back alley conversations that have to happen. Hey, you know, you're dreaming because professionally you need a network and that's how you can build a network without being networky, right? Without being salesy. I haven't been to a network event in I don't even know how long I stopped going to those years ago. Job fairs, none of that stuff. Why? Because it's hokey. It, in my opinion, it doesn't work, right? But if you go out and do what you do that excites you, you're going to be at your best and you're going to be like more persuasive. It's, yes, it's you're going to be influential. Yeah. People are going to gravitate towards you because they're like, that guy looks like a lot of fun. 
right? And that and it, that's how you win friends. That's how you build your network. And that has profound impacts on your ability to build a business if you're ambitious or to get into a C-level executive position. People have to know you. They have to know what they're buying. They're not going to interview traditionally for those types of positions. They're just not. No, that's great. And I love the framework aspect of it because I'm a true believer being in the space since 2017 that all you got to do is plug in the discipline that you were already saying before, yeah. right? Plug in the determination, the teamwork, the leadership skills that an ambitious vet naturally has, that we naturally have, right? Into a framework and it inspires independent thinking. It inspires diverse way of thinking in ways that you may or may not have already thought before. So, um, do you want to continue to walk through the the five B's? Because in the center of that is focus, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. So what and, you want, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say you are what you're focused on. Yeah. Right. That's who you become. Your day to day activities. Right. Your day is your life. Right. And your life is the sum total of all those days put together. So whatever you're focusing on on a day to day basis, that's who you are. And that's how other people are perceiving you. And you have to be purposeful about that right that focus is very important so yeah. that's why yeah. you need to literally sit down and write it down and review it i've got mine just so i can show you guys i've got mine in here right this is my full focus planner it's right there at the front i go back to my goals constantly you're a michael hyatt guy too oh yeah brother oh, look yeah. at this yeah. Oh, I, got the, your I got the same one. Yeah. That's, that's the oh, one. Oh, wow. Ambition, I know you're not seeing this, but we have the same exact full focus planner that Michael Hyatt creates. This is crazy. Yeah. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> Apparently. We'll go do some karate <laughs> in the garage, but it, it's, it's that important. Right. And so that is what my focus is. Right. And I write my goals within those five areas. Right. Those are my focus domains. It also going through that process. And I've, I've provided a download for you. And I think if you're listening to this, go, go read through the download because it can explain it more detail, more visually. But you have to think about each of those areas and then understand the impacts that what you're doing in one area has profound impacts on the other. And what you're trying to do is create a force multiplier effect, positive force multiplier effect. Because one little goal, let's say lose weight, right? Yeah, that's a body goal. But that has profound impacts on your brain. It has profound impacts on your bankroll, right? You're probably going to stop spending as much money eating out, doing all those types of things. So true. Prof profound impact on your buddies. You're going to feel more confident. Like you'll want to go to the beach again. It has profound impacts on your business, right? Because you're going to, your personal brand will be better mm -hmm. because you'll feel better, right? You look good. You feel good. You feel good. You play good, right? That saying has been said a lot. You got some so, one-liners, man. I love it, though. I love it. Just boom, I stole that boom. one from Jer from Jerome Bettis. The bus. <laughs> He's the first person I ever heard say that. So then what you have to do is once you set those goals, right? Because today's priority could be to become tomorrow's meaningless activity, right? Circumstances change. Mm -hmm. You then need a feedback loop. And that's where the tape method comes in. So test, assess, plan, execute. So anytime you're undertaking a new endeavor, or you're reworking one, you need to test it, right? And you need to test each component of that cycle. So the cycle is assess, plan, execute, right? You need to test your assessment. Am I getting the type of information on the front end that I need to give me something that's executable, right? Mm -hmm. that, that allows me to plan and then execute. And then yeah. you need to look at your plan. You need to write it down and you need to test that. Was there another variable that I should have considered, right? And then you need to track your execution and you need to test that. Like, did that actually, what I did day to day, did that take me to this goal? Mm. that I had initially set. Yes or that's no. Good. And delete no, that's or repeat, good. right? So if you if that answer is yes, great. Now let's identify the next series of, of action steps or the next big building block in the goal and let's giddy up, right? right. Repeat. Right. I find that leveraging the feedback loop over here and you, you know, I want to hear your take on this, brother, because I am a huge feedback loop kind of a guy as well. Yeah. But it also I had to learn to start leveraging that tool through a lot of failure. Right. It just took a lot of failure to leverage that tool. Right. Um, not the sharpest crayon in the box, this Marine. But, brother, I mean, what I've learned with that, with the feedback loop, it takes some self awareness, right, to kind of stop and check in. Like, how, how do we gain that potential self awareness? I know now, like, them gaining awareness of the tool is great. You supply an amazing concept and framework within this download that ambitious vets will be able to get um, here soon at the end of the show. But I mean, how do we gain the awareness of feedback loop, man? 
So you gain awareness by mastering the art of asking the question, right? Ask the questions. This All is, right. this is the skill set that if every veteran could just really hone in and develop the art of asking questions, precisely what you're doing right now, precisely what I do on my podcast, mm -hmm. which is just asking why or what or mm -hmm. how, right? Yeah. Ask those basic Good. questions and keep digging until it's clear. Right. Yep. Until you just until you're replowing the same territory, you're like, okay, I know this already. I know this. Mm -hmm. Right. I know it in my bones now. The art of asking a question is how you gain awareness. And I used to feel very stupid asking questions until I realized finally that the person who asks questions is in control of the conversation. Right. True. For the first time ever today, I was nervous before a podcast. You know why? Because yeah. I'm not the one asking the questions, I'm the one getting grilled right? Mm -hmm. You don't know where it's going to go. And you look at like parenting, right? You're like, you don't ask the questions here. I ask the questions here. Where were you? Right? That person is in charge of the conversation. Detectives, same way. They're asking the questions while you're sitting there sweating, right? Yeah. Asking them questions is imperative. And there's actually an art to asking questions. And I can give you a brief break breakdown on that right now. But you ask with some type of what's going on? What's up? Yeah see what the answer is, right? And I'm literally that simple, whether you're interrogating children or people or, well, children or people, but whatever it is, a business model, ask that question, what's up? What's up here? And take note of what you hear. And then you need to ask those second and third level questions because there's going to be all these gems that drop out. And you're like, I need to ask more about that. I need to ask yeah. more about that. I need to ask more about that. And you said, tell me about that, right? And ideally, if you're really cooking with gas, you're writing stuff down while people are saying something so you remember what to go back to mm. that's one of the main reasons i have this planner is this, literally sometimes as people are talking i'm taking notes i'm like do you mind if i take notes and they're like nope not at all actually people, most people love that people, people are complimented yeah <laughs> love they love that. it so i also make notes so i know what to get back to i know what promises i've made during that day and i review it at the end of the day so that way i can make sure that it gets done right even <laughs> if it is two or three weeks later i mean late is better than ever yeah so you don't ever want to blow somebody off so that's how i create that awareness is asking those questions and taking notes literally just writing stuff down in a book <laughs> yeah. and oh my god it's so profound no it isn't right. you know it, right. it, that's just what for whatever reason we had all these log books in the military and we stopped using them when we get out and i understand like you know the green monsters are ugly but you know, this full focus <laughs> notebook is kind of chic, right? It is, it is a little bit more upper class, but yeah, it's an amazing, it is an amazing journal. Um, I was away from the mic ambitious fact because I was admiring my full focus planner over here, but I mean, it does, it gives you a feedback loop questionnaire at the, at the end of every week and stuff like that as well. So that's just amazing stuff. So um, brother, we have a tradition here um, called golden grenade, right? You're about to walk through golden grenade city. You ready, brother? Yeah, let's do it. Let's rock. So um, pretty much what I, we want to wrap this up with is you can wrap it up with any golden grenades that you've potentially already spit out throughout this um, episode, which has been endless amount already, right, that we can go and apply in tomorrow. But also you can sum it up with three more brand new golden grenades, right? And really who you're speaking to right here, Carson, is – an ambitious vet that's outside the immediate transitional window that is in the trenches of life right now, just struggling to find the satisfaction, the fulfillment, the sense of purpose after career stability has already been figured out. What would be three golden grenades that you would provide that ambitious vet right now? First one that I, that I would say, and I think that this is so important, is be unreasonable, right? I cannot tell you how many conversations I've had with veterans where I'm asking them, what do you want? And I cannot get them to actually say how big their dream is, right? I, I will literally say, oh, like, what do you want? I'm like, well, I want to jet ski more. And they're like, oh, that's stupid. I'm like, it's not stupid. Yeah. That's what you want, right. right? Be unreasonable. If that's what you want is to have a jet ski and to ride it every day, brother, let's make a plan to make that happen. <laughs> it's not, not doable. It's actually very achievable. Right. You could pay for a jet ski just selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Right. You don't need to like go get like a new job and, you know, have, you know, two six figure incomes in your household to enjoy a jet ski. Buy an older one, refurb one. You know, there's a million different op uh, ways yeah. to get that done. And sometimes what happens is we get into the trenches of life to, to quote you is you start 
chipping that back before you've even interrogated the reality that you could possibly have it. Right? right now, maybe you say, well, you know what? I would have to do this, 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 and this, 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 and this, and this, and I don't want to do all of those things. So you know what? The jet ski sounds stupid now. That's a totally different conversation, right? If you if you've if you've gone to it and you said, here's how I would do it if I insisted on getting a jet ski. Here's how I would make it happen. Well, guess what? There's your execution plan right there, mm -hmm. right? Tape mm -hmm. all the way, right? That's the yeah. tape method in action. Now, if you say that sounds like a gigantic pain in the ass, <laughs> then don't do it. But you have to be unreasonable at the front end. You actually have to allow yourself to go there mentally. You know, it's like that uh, that movie Hook right? Where they're pretending there's food and then finally it pops up, right? Like it's a lot like that, right? That like you have to actually materialize it in your mind first. Then everything else starts happening. When I, when I first talked about the Zen veteran, I told a good friend of mine and just the name, just the name. I was like, I think we're going to come up with this new concept to kind of explain what I just went through. It's called the Zen veteran. Like he laughed right in my face. That yeah. was the dumbest thing he had ever heard, mm. ever heard. But later on, because I kept manifesting and I kept working on it, same person ultimately gave me a camera because they were getting rid of it because I had materialized it, right? I'd said, this is what I'm trying to do. And what I'm thinking about is I need a camera so I can get on video and you know, explain stuff to people. The initial reaction was a laugh to my face, mm. <laughs> which hurt, which was my like worst case scenario. But you know what? After that, everything was easy, right? And I wouldn't have gotten the camera and I would have gotten all these things that people have given me over the years because I never would have said anything because I was being too reasonable. So that's right. grenade number one. Great. Grenade number two, I have already talked about it. Get good at asking questions. There's something about conventional transition wisdom that says if you ask questions, you will be found out and people will question your work ethic and people will hate you. I don't understand. I was reading through it. LinkedIn comments are just as bad as the comments anywhere else for the record. But I go, I go jump into them because I feel like I've got my head above water now. You know, I'm looking at it from a more anthropological perspective. <laughs> and somebody had been talking about something that, you know, they just said, hey, like if you can take terminal leave for 30 days at the end of your service, do it, right? Because you're never really going to get another chance. To, to, to take terminal leave like this. And I agree, right? Like there's, I don't know that I could go on 60, day, 60 days vacation at any point in the future. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could, I could dreamline that. I could probably find a way, but it'd be a gigantic pain in the ass. It wouldn't be like taking terminal leave. You get in a few comments down and people are like, no, you've got to get started right now. Like, and if you are asking people, you know, how much would you expect to work 40 hours a week in your job, then that quit, you, that means you have bad work ethic and people are going to see this gap and you're going to have to explain it. You just need to get started. You should be, he basically the, the tone was you should be lucky to have a job, right? <laughs> like you should be That's so lucky. School, yeah. And I was yeah. like, come on, right? Question mm -hmm. that, right? Question that for sure, because I know way too many people who are not living their lives like that. And that's also the reason, which is the third golden grenade, go do something exciting, something exciting to you. Because when you are excited about something, you are at your best and you are more likely to be persuasive of people. You are more likely to gain influence and give influence, right? So you are going to get a lot out of that. And you're going to realize that these, these, I call them the conformist Kens, right? <laughs> These conformist Kens are, are really in a state of fear, right? They're really afraid of rocking the boat because they have done this, this very specific way. They've been very diligent and they have grinded, right? And they have done a lot of things. It's not that they've done them wrong, but it's just that you don't have to tie yourself to that, right? You don't have to work every waking minute of every single day to get ahead. Do you need to work hard? Yes. Do you need to work smart? 100%. <laughs> Working smart, though, is where conventional transition wisdom a lot of times falls off. That says send 300 resumes, get two callbacks, and then you know what? Dust yourself off and keep doing that, right? <laughs> so you've got to ask the questions, and the best way to find those questions if you don't know what you don't know is to get involved with new groups of people. Start asking questions within those. A lot of times, like I, I give the example of my mountain bike group, I was working with a banker, a car dealership owner, and a guy who worked at the VA. There's all sorts of information in that group, right? Yeah. There's yep. so, I mean, these are, two of them were high level people, right? One, one at a very high level at a bank, right? And one, one of the publicly traded companies here in Alaska. 
you know, I wouldn't have accessed that any other way. And I wouldn't have been able to elevate my game if I wouldn't have gone and done something exciting. And if I wouldn't have asked questions, right. If I would have been realistic, none of those things would have happened. Right. So those are my three golden grenades. All right. Yeah. That's amazing, brother. Um, you know, what I've heard consistently through this entire episode is change your environments, changes your yeah. perspective, right? Yeah. Um, that's really good wisdom there. And also asking questions and surrounding yourself with people that have more resources and information than you, Ambitious Vet, because when you do that, then diversified thinking is inspired and you consistently stay unstuck in your life. So Carson, brother, where can an Ambitious Vet find out more about this awesome downloadable um, that you've created for an ambitious vet that may be like, hey, yeah, I want to move forward with understanding more of how to become a Titan out of the uniform, man. How do I bridge the gap and accelerate my learning curve towards becoming a Titan, which I love that, man, because I'm I'm kind of a, a Greek mythology guy and I just love that kind of alpha language, brother. But uh, yeah, man, the floor is yours. Work in ambitious. Yeah, so you more. could. You can check out www.thezenveteran.com. That's where everything lives and breathes. Uh, the download is going to be an Ambitious Vet exclusive. So there'll be a link, I'm sure, to be down in the description. So that's going to be available only to Ambitious Vet li listeners for the next two weeks. So go check nice. it out first. You're going to, that's my, that's my little high five to the Ambitious Vet podcast for having me on. And you could also, I do a lot. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn uh, just because that's where my fish swim. So you, your best place, if you want to hit me up via social media, is going to be LinkedIn. I uh, spent a lot of time focusing on that. Those are the two best. You can also, I'll give everybody my direct email, all the ambitious vet letter listeners. If you have a question or you don't know where to start, right? Just tell me, be like, hey, here's what I've stuck on. Here's what I've thought. What do you think? I promise you I will respond to this email, right? So send me an email to Carson, C-A-R-S-O-N at the Zen Veteran dot com that's t-e-t-h-e-z-e-n-v-e-t-e-r-a-n.com carson brother you're one of the smartest marines i've met since i've gotten out of the marine corps um you make us marines proud brother um so yeah ambitious fed i encourage you i challenge you go find out more about what carson honeycutt is doing not only is he a crane eater like me but he's a guy that's getting out there and applying everything that he's learning and helping ambitious vets like yourself move forward in the trenches and anybody like that is uh in a good book over here with me plus he's got the full focus planner man i think we're best friends so carson <laughs> brother um just thanks man for for joining the show again for being flexible on the the show times and uh Brother, any last parting wisdom words for the Ambitious Fet Network? Enjoy your life. You earned it. The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to vettrainingcoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. You know, innovation starts with feedback from the end user. To put that in military terms, sometimes we have to put our needs on blast in order to get squared away with a missing resource or tool that will make the difference in our career advancement, fulfillment, or potentially just our overall happiness. Combine Arms and myself would love to hear your feedback and what your biggest challenges are right now so we can combine arms as a community to make sure the job loss, depression, and suicide, um, and even the lack of career opportunities, making those things a thing of the past. But here's the thing, Ambitious Vet, that can't happen without your voice. So how can you support? Take 10 minutes of your life and click the link in the show notes to take a brief feedback survey. Once you do so, you'll be entered into a raffle to win your pair of Combine Arms Floperators courtesy of Combat Flip Flops. Two winners will be announced once our goal of 50 veterans have been achieved. Click the link in the show notes below and enter to win.